Every time you fill up your car, you're using fuel made from plants and plankton that lived over 100 million years ago. So how exactly did that become oil? Hey there, welcome to our channel, where we try to explain simply how the world works. This is one of our community's most requested videos because while everyone knows oil is important, few people know much about how it's made. Now we've done a video on the environmental impacts of oil before, but this time, we're going back to the very beginning and working our way forward through time to show you how dinosaurs indirectly gave us this petroleum stuff. So let's get into it. First, it starts with life. Our planet has undergone many changes over its 4.5 billion year lifespan. But let's go back in time around 100 million years ago when Earth's surface was vastly different than it is today. Back then, huge swaths of land were covered in dense forests, and the Earth's oceans were full of microscopic plants called plankton and algae. When these organisms died, their bodies would sink to the bottom of the shallow seas and stagnant swamps. Over time, they formed thick, gooey layers of partially decayed organic matter. Then layer upon layer of sediment, including sand, silt, and rock, piled on top of that. All this material was heavier than the organisms below it, so it slowly pressed them deeper and deeper into the muck. As the dead stuff got deeper underground, the temperature rose and the pressure increased. The weight of all those layers meant the deeper down you went, the hotter it got. At the same time, oxygen levels dropped dramatically, creating an environment where things just didn't decay. Instead, the decaying organisms underwent chemical changes. Under the intense heat and pressure, the carbon and hydrogen atoms in their bodies rearranged and combined to form hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are molecules made of only hydrogen and carbon atoms. These include methane, which is natural gas and another variety that makes up crude oil. Now, this process of turning dead stuff into hydrocarbons is called thermal maturation. Depending on the exact conditions, thermal maturation can produce either natural gas or crude oil. If the material is buried at relatively shallow depths where temperatures are lower, it creates natural gas. But if it's buried deeper down where temperatures reach between 60 degrees Celsius and 120 degrees Celsius, then it creates crude oil. To be clear, these are very rough guidelines. There are lots of factors that influence what creates what, but no matter how you slice it, thermal maturation takes a long, long time to create oil. That's why it's considered a non-renewable resource. Eventually, the oil created by these ancient layers of decaying life found their way upward toward Earth's surface. As it migrated through the pores in rocks, it pulled in places where it was trapped by impermeable rock layers. Today, we know these trapped pockets of oil as oil reservoirs. Of course, oil isn't good for us in the long term because it releases carbon dioxide when we burn it, which causes climate change. But for now, it's one of the main sources of energy powering our world. In fact, in 2018, humans used 100 million barrels of oil every day. We extract or drill for oil using rigs both on land and offshore. Once it's out of the ground, it's transported to refineries where it's processed and distributed to gas stations and power plants. It even powers large ships and airplanes, oil powers our transportation systems and industries, and helps create all sorts of products from plastics to medicine to clothes. So while oil may have started as ancient life, it's transformed into a powerful resource that shapes our modern world. So there you have it, from tiny phytoplankton to fossil fuels, we hope we were able to shed some light on how oil is made. Hit the like button if you learned something new today and subscribe for more Science Explained Simply. Thanks for watching.